Okay, we got three basic straps here. This is a uh, walking horse three inch English bridle. This one is the Dovo Russian leather um, 189 something something um, with linen on the back, two inches wide. This is walking horse Horween Cordovan. You're going to see a lot of stropping videos where people recommend you go like this when you make the flips. That you hold the razor almost like you'd hold a little pencil and move like that. I would agree that is the best way to do it. So if you can master that, go for it. But um, I have found that I don't have the physical dexterity to do it that way. So I gave up. I kept cutting my straps, kept dropping my razor. And um, just like how I use my left hand every now and again to help me shave, um, the end is all that matters. The end justifies the means. And if you're stropping well, You'll know it from how it uh, feels in your hand and how it sounds and, uh, and how it shaves. So before you strop on the leather, you should use the preparation side of the strop. That's the thing that's on the back. On this one, it's black cotton. On this one, it's linen. On this one, it's black cotton again. We've also got the well, walking horse pieces with the white uh, herringbone cotton, which acts a lot like uh, a louder version of linen. Anyway, so you want to strop just like you would strop on the regular side and by using the preparation surface you're agitating the edge and, and heating it up and, and getting it ready for the use of the real leather. It, it's not that you couldn't use just the regular leather but it would just take you a hell of a lot longer. Um, this strop is a narrower strop than three inches so with this one uh, you know, for, for a beginner, it's a lot easier to use the three-inch wide one because you can just go straight up and down Main Street all day long. With these narrower ones, you've got to incorporate a motion that takes all of the razor's edge onto the preparation or the le or the leather side uh, over the course of the stropping action. Um, but what you'll find is, you know, you're starting like this and you're ending like that, and you just end up stropping the middle part a hell of a lot more than you do the, the, the heel and the toe. So when I use these skinny ones, I don't think there's anything wrong with just adding a few strokes like this and then adding a few strokes like this. And you know, this, this nice going across the surface of the strop motion, it's great, but um, it's a hell of a lot easier to cut the strop to me when you have to incorporate lateral motion versus just going straight up and down. Now, when you're a beginner, I don't know why this is, but I could tell you that it's, to me, much easier to cut a strop when it's hanging at the typical way that we use them, you know, this part somewhere near our sternum and this part going down about, you know, 45 degrees to the ground. Most, most people prefer to end up stropping that way, but uh, if you hold a strop parallel to the ground, it is much harder to cut, just like it is hard to cut a paddle strop. So you can do like this if you like. Now, when you're stropping, you're always moving towards the spine. Always moving towards the spine. Okay, and when you, when you get to the ends, you flip over and start moving towards the spine again before the edge reaches the leather. Because the easiest way to cut the strop is, you're going like this, you're getting to the end, and you just move a millimeter or two this way because you're still moving your arm this way as the edge gets down on the letter. If you do that, you'll end up nicking the strop, and then you have a pain in the ass spot that you've either got to avoid, or sand over, or scissor down, or something, but uh, it's always a problem. Now, when you get to the prepper, when, you, when you're done using the prep side and you're gonna use the leather, you wanna rub up the leather with your palm a little bit to, to heat it up and, and introduce some of the oils that your hand has. They help. Now, whenever I put the razor on the strop, I always put it down like this, and then I start to move here, and then before I before the edge gets to the to the leather, I'll already start moving it in the direction of the stropping action. Now, even though I'm holding it the wrong way, squeezing it too hard, and doing like this as opposed to the better way, which is this way, I I use what my ears and my hand are telling me to be able to tell if I'm putting as little pressure as possible on the edge where it meets the leather because that, that's the goal. You want to have the edge touching the leather as lightly as possible. So you want to really tug on the strop very hard. And I use a mental trick. I, I imagine that I'm, that I'm starting to initiate a twist like this with my hand as I'm, as I'm making my stropping motions. 
So when I'm going this direction, I'm imagining that I'm about to start a motion like this. And when I'm going in this direction, I imagine that I'm about to start a motion like that. It's just a mental concept that allows me to, to put as little pressure as possible uh, on, the, on the razor's edge. Some of the things you got to be careful for, when you make the when you make the turns, make sure you leave, a, you leave enough space for the for the width of the razor, so that as you turn, you don't come across that little part that holds on to the leather that's sewn into the leather, or whatever this little end cap thing. You know, you can you can hurt the edge if you just go across that even once. Believe it or not. Um, now, different strops will will feel and sound differently. And one of the ways I evaluate a strop is, is how good of a communicator it is. So you, you have durability to consider, but you also have how good of a communicator it is. Um, and then you just have whether you subjectively like how it feels or not. Now, English Bridle, I found to be very durable. Uh, this thing has been used at least a thousand times in the office, and you can barely tell on most spots. I mean, I, I have cut it here, as you can see. <laughs> If I ever cut a strop, it's usually at the bottom right-hand part, and then I end up just not going as far down the strop until I'm done with that one. Um, but, you know, over here where I make the turns, it, it pretty much looks almost exactly the same as this part over here, and this part over here looks looks like it was never used, really. Now let's compare it to what I consider a pretty fragile one, the Horween Cordovan. I don't think anything works as good as the Horween Cordovan, but uh, it is definitely fragile. You can see here. Uh, I've been using this one since last summer, so maybe 1,500 to 2,000 stropping sessions. But over here, it, it's pretty much gone where I make the turn. It, uh, it doesn't really strop the same way as it does on these shiny parts. It strops fantastically. Uh, and the Dolo Russian, yeah, it's, it, it, you could wear those out pretty easily too, but um, uh, they, they feel wonderful and, um, and uh, they, they feel great, they sound great, they uh, communicate to my hands really well, um, but unfortunately they don't make a three inch one with a preparation side on the back, which is dumb, but they don't. Um, anyway, so one of the ways that you can uh, try to maximize the uh, durability of your strop is instead of doing the same thing every time going all the way the full length of the strop, uh, you know, do a little stropping here and a little stropping here and a little stropping here. And then you won't end up with an area that's just getting killed by, by the same turning action again and again and again. Uh, 